Hi, welcome to today's lesson on creating a scorable drag and drop interaction in Adobe Captivate 9. I'm Mike Snodgrass, Adobe Certified Instructor. In part one of this lesson, we're going to learn how to create a simple drag and drop interaction where one draggable object is connected to one drop target. In part two of our drag and drop lesson, we will see how to create a more complex interaction with multiple draggable objects targeting a drop target. And as always, if you're interested in training for yourself or your company, please visit my website at www.msnod.com for more information. All right, let's take a look at the lesson. In this scenario, we will have our learners drag the colored lights to the traffic light. If they place them in the correct location, they'll get 10 points. If they place them incorrectly, they'll get no points. We will also provide feedback captions for both success and failure. A captivate drag and drop interaction requires both draggable objects and drop targets. In this scenario, we will duplicate the three colored traffic lights, designate the three original lights as draggable objects, We'll then position the duplicate lights correctly over the traffic light and designate them as drop targets. We will then hide the duplicate colored lights so that they're not visible in our completed lesson. And then finally, we'll create our drag and drop interaction and set up captions and scoring options. I'll begin by duplicating each of the lights. So I'll right click on the red light, duplicate. As you see, I could use a shortcut uh, on the PC, Control D, or on the Mac, Command D. I'll right click the green one, duplicate. I'll select the yellow light and then hit Control D. Now I'm going to drag each of these copies over the uh, traffic light. So I'll take the red one, position it right here, like so. Put yellow here like so. And green like so. Since I didn't get them perfectly positioned, I'll nudge them into place. So I'll click the red light and I'll use the arrows on my keyboard to nudge into place. So the up arrow once, left arrow maybe twice, up one more time. Pretty good. I'll repeat that with yellow. Up a few times, green, up arrow once. Looks pretty good. So now that everything is positioned correctly, we need to hide the duplicate lights that are on the traffic light so that they are not visible in our completed lesson. That way we will have drop targets for the three draggable lights, but our learner will just see empty spaces on the traffic light. So I'll select the red light, and I could click the Edit Image button found in the Properties panel and reduce the opacity to zero, but it'll actually be a lot easier just to hide the object in runtime. So I'll click the visible output eyeball button and the red drop target will now be invisible in our published module. I will then need to repeat those steps for the other two drop targets. So now we're going to add our drag and drop interaction. I'll go up to the interactions button and choose drag and drop. The drag and drop wizard opens up and there are three steps. First step, I'm going to set up my draggable objects. My second step will define the targets. And then the third step will match them. 
Now, if I scroll down a little bit here, you'll notice a submit button was added. I'll move that down here into the lower right area. Okay, so let's identify our draggable objects. Now, the instructions will tell you up here at the top left that you need to hold down Control and click, or on the Mac, Command and click, to select multiple objects. I've actually found you don't need to do that. I can just click on red, then green, then yellow. All three are now designated as a draggable object. If you accidentally select something you didn't want to make draggable, say my caption here, I could click the little red minus sign at the top right and it would remove that object from the behavior. So I've designated my three draggable objects. I'm going to click Next. And now we need to designate our targets. So I will click on the three lights in the traffic signal. Again, if you over-select, just click the little uh, red minus sign next to and deselect. So we have our draggable objects. We have our drop targets. I will click Next. And now we simply need to match them up. You'll notice that each of our draggable objects has a plus sign in the middle. I will grab the plus sign in the red light and drag it to the red drop target. Ah, my success and failure captions appear. We'll fix those here in a few minutes. I'll drag the plus sign for the yellow object to the yellow target and repeat with green. Looks good. I'm going to click Finish. And we have a drag and drop interaction. Now we just need to set up the captions so they're, they say what we want and they're presentable. And we need to set up scoring. So let's do the captions first. I'm going to click on the success caption, and I'll double click that, and I'll just type in congrats. I'll click away and click back once on that caption to select it, and I'm going to properties over here on the right hand side, and under style name, I'll click that. I created a style previously called Feedback. So I'm going to choose the Feedback style. And my congratulations success caption looks pretty good. I need to also format the failure caption, which is currently behind the success caption. So I could hide the success caption, but I'm just going to drag it out of the way temporarily. So I'll move it up like so. Can now click on my failure caption. Double click to select the text inside and type incorrect. Please try again. I'll do a little resizing since it got a little scrunched up here. So I'll click away. Click on it, grab the handles, and go to Properties and apply the same feedback style. I need to resize a little more. Maybe I'll scrunch it down a little bit. We'll go with that. I'll drag the congrats caption back on top of it. Since neither one of these captions will be visible until our learner either succeeds or fails, 
it's okay to put them pretty much anywhere on the screen uh, as long as you're happy with the end results. All right, I think that's pretty good. Let's set up scoring. I'll just click anywhere inside the slide. And on the right side, you'll notice there's a new drag and drop properties panel. I will click actions category. Confirm here. I'm going to allow them only one attempt, although you could certainly allow multiple attempts and then give them feedback based on whether it's the first, second, third attempt, etc. I'm going to confirm that I've got uh, a failure caption and a success caption. I'll scroll on down and find reporting. I will check including quiz. I'll confirm that it's worth 10 points. I'll add those points to my grand total and I will report these results to the LMS system. And that should do it. We've got a simple drag and drop. Let's save it. And I'll preview and see what we get. So I'll click the preview button. I will say preview from this slide. Okay, so it took a minute for the preview to render this. Let's give it a try. So I'm going to incorrectly drag them and see that my failure caption should pop up. So I'm going to drag the green light, place it at the top. I'll put yellow at the bottom. I'll put red in the middle. And I'll click Submit. Incorrect, try again. All right, so I'm going to close this preview. We'll preview it again and then get the answers right. Okay, so my preview is once again rendered. And let's test this now and see if it works when we correctly apply the lights. So I'll drag red to the top, yellow to the middle, green to the bottom, click Submit. How about that? And again, if I was connected to an LMS system here and this was online, 10 points would have been reported. And that is a simple drag and drop interaction in Captivate 9. In part two of this lesson, we'll create a more complex drag and drop interaction using groups.